Hey, how's it going, folks? Clutch here. Welcome to the Farm Sim Show. Well, weekend edition. This is a bit of a different show, a special edition we're doing for a couple of new mods that have come over PC over the last week. And I felt like showing them off and taking a look at them with you folks. So well, thank you. Uh, you can see we got one right behind me here. We'll see how this one turns out. This is a fantastic mod. Uh, I'm a bit of a truck nut, so you guys know that uh, I'm pretty excited. This one has been an update, a bit of an update. So you may have seen this one before. Just know there's some updates out on this. We're going to go through it all today. Got two other mods. One I am totally surprised by, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's so cool. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use it, but we'll talk more about that once we get to it. Uh, you're going to find links to all the ones that I'm talking about, all the mods I'm talking about. We'll put links in the description down below. So if you guys want to try these on PC, you're going to have Adder. Of course, all the mods I am talking about today are only available for PC and Mac. They are all external download sites. Be aware of that. But other than that, folks, let's dive in. This is not a regular show. Usually we're talking about mods in the Mod Hub. These are not mods in the Mod Hub at all. These are all, all external as well. No mods and testing today. We're just looking at what's out right now. Let's go dive in and take a look. Our first mod is a New Holland S2200 Forage Harvester. This is definitely an old school forage harvester. Fantastic looking mod though. Um, it's pretty much what you'd expect. You've got the forage harvester and it also includes three different heads. Now options for this mod are somewhat limited. However, this is a fantastic entry level forage harvester. If you're looking for something new to start your farm with, not a bad bet here. We'll bounce over to the store and take a look at what you get. Now, of course, you're going to find this in the forage harvesting section of your store. You can see that the S2200 has 220 horsepower. Go figure. Holds 15 miles per hour. And, well, there's not a ton of options here. We just have some wheel options. And, like I said, Trelleborg, Michelin's. That's it. You got two options. You got Trelleborg's, where they're kind of small. The Michelin's, which are more of a balloon style, I suppose. Kind of the wides. There you go. That is it. That is all. An extra two grand as well if you want to go with those michelins just be aware of that Thirty-two thousand bucks or thirty thousand are rim colors well white or yellow no change in price there either so that is the base options there only for not a lot to talk about to be perfectly honest just tighter options and the other parts that are included with this mod are the three heads so we have the regular header i suppose we have the pickup and then we also have the corn head we have the three different options five five and eight thousand dollars respectively 5 meters, 3.1 meters, and 6 meters, respectively. You can see the speeds down there are also kind of different. Uh, the pickup does actually do 12 miles an hour, while both the cutter and the corn head only handle 6 miles per hour. None of these have any options, mind you. They are all yellow. You can't change colors. There is no additional options to be added to any of these. Stock is all you can have. That is it. That is all. So coming around the backside of the, of the harvester, you're going to notice there's a pin hitch as well. That is fully functional. The interior of the mod does look actually fairly authentic as well. We can fire this up. We have gauges that do work over on the side here. You can see that fuel gauge just fired up. Everything looks good. We'll back on out. And you know what? Let's pick up this pin hitch to this, this uh, trailer right here. Looks good. And now we'll open our pipe up. It looks like it should. It actually sees that trailer. So this will work just the same as any other forage harvester in game. There's going to be a little bit smaller head uh, than the base ones, of course. We'll fire this on up. And away we go. Let's see if we can just get some corn down the side here. It is, seems like it's almost trampling it more than it, but I think that is just the uh, dynamics on this particular map. You can see we are throwing corn like nobody's business back in this trailer. Yeah, not a problem there at all. Lots of corn, but it's fairly small width. Now I'm doing about half speed. I can gas this up a little bit more. It doesn't seem to have any problem going at a fairly good speed. I'm actually kind of surprised at how fast we're doing this. It does look like we're getting a pretty good clip on this. Just checking out the animations for that head, you can see it is actually sucking some corn in between the rollers there as well before it shoots it back into our bin. Looks good. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, plenty of horsepower too. I was a little bit surprised when we first downloaded this if it would actually handle pulling a bin at a decent rate. Now even without this bin, I'm sure we'd be, I mean, we'd be 10 times better if we had someone along driving beside us, but she seems to handle this no problem whatsoever. So folks, that there is the new Holland S2200 Forge Harvester. Three heads. We'll take a look at that when you get a chance. Not bad. So let's move on to our next mod, the Ford F-Series, the 2020 F-Series. I know a bunch of you have been asking to see what the options are on this. Uh, this one is available. Well, it's been available for about two months now, maybe three months. I think back to maybe January even it was available when this one is released. It's a fantastic mod. This is by Roro Customs, the original. It's been edited a few times. We're currently up to version five, I think. And uh, so far, it seems like it's this is probably the best yet. There's quite a few options with this. We have, well, we got an F-250 over here, kind of a stock look. This has, I believe, the FX4 package, uh, as well as the King Ranch. A King Ranch package, there you go. You can see that on the back there. By the way, this all changes. Just, just so you know, everything can be changed on this, so it's authentic. So we got a big King Ranch. Over here, 
I think we have an XLT F350 Power Stroke. Yeah, and this one here that has a bit of a custom deck on it. As you can see, we have that Hillsboro flat deck on it. There's no hitch on the back, no tail hitch on the bottom, but we do have a gooseneck, of course. So of course you're gonna find these both in the cars section of your store. We've got the F-Series gas, as well as the F-Series diesel, 37.4, 47.9 are your prices respectively. Let's go take a look at the diesel. The options for both are for the most part the same. Now, color options, you've got a ton. Bumper, design, grill, mirror, main, trim and hooks, so many options here. And they all have quite a few options as well involved in them. Um, they're mostly the authentic colors for the truck as well and more of a kind of a metallic color. So let's go with some competition orange. There's our design color as well. We'll get the uh, main color that way as well. That looks good. Look at that, kind of an almost like a metallic orange style, not bad. Our wheel brands are gonna change just the wheels themselves, the tires mostly. So this is gonna end up going, you're gonna be able to get some duels out of this as well in this section, depending on what you go with. If you go up to the 450, like I said, um, also in this section over here, you have the F-Series wheel configuration. So this is gonna give you some more of an off-road style. This is gonna change your rims up. And there are some options in here to give you some off-road tires as well. And there's actually some F-450 wheels later on that you can see that give you kind of the authentic F450 style wheels. We're gonna leave this here. Uh, we'll go right on up to the F450, why not? There you go. There's your F450 wheels, those look all right. Our bumper options, pretty minor, minor stuff here, folks. We go to the front, you can kind of see how it just changed that wing option. You have the 350, 450, and the 250 options as well. Snow, sorry, the uh, plow prep, as well as a winch up on front, you can change this. You can't have them both, one or the other, plow, win, uh, winch, or nothing. We keep on scrolling on down. You got a bumper guard option. You got the black or chrome option there. We'll go with black. You can add ramps to the back. Stock bed options. We have a toolbox we can put in the back. We can add a bed topper or we can add the actual topper itself. So it's the, just the low bed or we can add the full topper cap. Quite a few options. It's crazy. I love the look of that topper, but we're not going to look at that one right now. We're going to leave that off. Tail configuration, you can actually have a fifth wheel tailgate if that's what you like. There's a couple options for your blades and decals from Platte Valley, Nebraska plates, that kind of thing. Uh, mud flap options, you can actually add some Ford branded mud flaps to both the back and rear wheels or drivetrain. Here's where things get a little bit interesting as well. We have, this is rear wheel drive options. We have four wheel drive, which is the FX4 as well, as well as the tremor option. Um, pretty much just changing that decal up in the back side here. That's about it. There's a couple other options in here. You can go through all of those that just kind of change the, uh, the, the the badging of the truck for the most part. Our roof options, you have regular. You also have a moon roof, the big Ford moon roof. Yes, bye, like it. And then we get down into our splitter. This is just changing the front bumper. There's a minor change there that removes kind of a front splitter part of your bumper. Uh, hitch options, a ton of hitch options here, folks. An absolute ton. So starting with, you've got a drop. You've got several different types of here. Um, you also have the pin hitch in the back, or you can go to the stock fifth wheel hitch. Like I said, there's just a couple different options depending on exactly what you want to go with. Oh, I almost forgot about the pin tail. Look at that. That's a nice looking hitch. That's fantastic. Uh, there's a drop hitch as well. Like I said, just a few different options. Make sure you go through all of those depending on what you want to have. If you want to have the fifth wheel, if you want to have that pin hitch in the back, Really depends on what you want to have. Uh, your steps, well, we have none right now. You've got the stock, and you also have the premium, guys. Look at those stock premiums, those look nice. Uh, it's F Series platform. Now, this is where you kind of change the bed because right now you're seeing we've got the dually with a stock bed that wouldn't look right. Now, for the most part, this changes just the interior. So we have the F250 XL, the XLT, uh, the Lariat, we have the premium platinum, as well as the King Ranch. Quite a few options, and you can see back here as well, you're getting some different uh, chrome badging on the back of the truck with the King Ranch and the Platinum Editions. Same thing happens when you get to the F2, F350s, and then once again you get to the end of this, it gets up to the F450s as well. Um, also in here, this is where you're going to find, like I said, the dually options for your bed. It just takes a while to get to it because there are so many options. And there we go, our F350 and our F450, which have the duallys. Those look good. And then lastly, we'll scroll right down to the bottom here our bed options. Right now we have our stock bed. There's a bunch of options in here. I don't know if I want to spoil this for you or not, but we're going to go through them because there are quite a few options from this Bradford bed, the CM bed, the Hillsboro bed. I love this one. This one is my favorite. And lastly, uh, oh, there's two Hillsboro beds, but there's one last one here, that bedrock bed. Um, so like I said, there's quite a few options here, folks. They all look really good. If you want to change away from that stock bed, a bunch of flat deck options. I'm, I'm pretty torn with this Hillsboro bed. I really like the look of this one. So there you have it, folks. Like I said, a ton of options for these trucks. Great, great mods. I absolutely love these mods. Uh, if we jump on inside this one here, we can listen to it fire up. You get the authentic starting sequence for the diesel as well. And she fires up, there she goes. 
The other automations on this are for the mirrors as well. Let's see if we can move those out. There we go. Mirrors are out. And you can see now we can actually extend them out a little bit as well. That's really the only animation that's uh, around for this truck. But you do have the Super Duty lights as well. All nicely done. Everything looks fantastic. Really a big fan of this truck, guys. Go, need to go check it out if, you have, uh, if you're looking for a nice truck. This is a nice set to have for sure. So let's move along. See what else we got on the list. This last mod I wanted to look at is the Eggenbau Stationary Motor V8. This is version one of this. this. is a brand new mod, and it's made from a different kind of mix mash of stuff. So the, the trailer itself, I believe, is from Vertex Design. Uh, the engine is actually from an ATS mod, I believe. There are a couple different mods that are included in this, and they come together pretty nicely. So we got to do a few different options, and we're going to talk about what this thing's going to be used for. Uh, and how it works in a sec but let's go over to the store and take a quick look at it so this is a trailer however you're going to find this in the miscellaneous section uh, it does have some options for colorings like you can tell there we had that nice burnt orange or blaze orange i guess they were calling it you can change the rims as well as the color design uh for the side we have different options there well that's kind of bright uh wheel brands you have a couple options for your wheel brands you get indians lizards and the bkts all of which are kind of unique to be honest i do like that beat those bkts we had on there that's an interesting design and then you have attacher type, and that is just going to change your front hitch here from round to more of a, what do they call it, a K80, I suppose. But it's more of a, a standard hitch, I guess. So you have a couple different options there. You also have this kind of a goosenecky style one. I'm not sure if that would be more of like a, a tractor with a high hitch is what you want to use that on. But for the other ones, I, I'm pretty sure, from what I've seen, most most can handle this. Um, other party trick, this this can move, so it's not really required to go to this. I can't. I haven't found anything that really needs to have this massive hitch part yet. There might be something out there, but from what I'm using it with, I haven't seen it yet. So for the most part, not a ton of options on this other than colorings, and that's always nice to have. Now, what is this going to be used for? Well, it really is just a stationary engine. This is going to replace a tractor on a piece of equipment where you maybe just don't want to have it sit with a tractor the whole time. It's got a hitch on the rear end of this, and it's going to power something like, well, maybe our new chrome pellet machine or maybe a feeding machine. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? So we, instead of using a tractor on this, you're going to use this piece of equipment, which only costs you roughly $13,000 in game to purchase, instead of using a $100,000 or $150,000 or $200,000 tractor. That is the whole purpose behind this. And plus, it absolutely looks cool. Um, now, to operate, you can actually jump inside of this and fire it up and drive it around. That's right, it's a drivable trailer. Let me bring up our menu here. Um, only thing is, it only holds about 3 miles an hour. It is fully steerable and drivable just like any of our belt system or our ramps. Just be aware that there is no first person view. That is the only difference. Also, towing with this is next to impossible. We'll give it a shot once we get hooked up, but let's go behind the Ford here and we'll drag it over because it is quite a drive otherwise. It was connected to our Crone Big Baler, our Pellet ba Baler I should say. And from here guys, let's just disconnect because we don't need to have this anymore. And you can see that that front hitch is going to drop down. We'll get out of the way and park this truck. Now, like I was saying earlier, guys, it's not great at towing any kind of trailers. So if you want to move this around, I'm going to recommend you move with the truck first and then jump in and just finalize the final position if you want to. But to try to move even this baler around, yeah, it can do it, but I can't really steer. For instance, right now, like I'm trying to steer. I can't steer. You can see the weight distribution. I'm getting pulled everywhere. So first party trick. Well, we can lower some stanchions on the back there. You can see we've got two stands that kind of stick off the back. Those can be lowered and they drop down into place just like so. And then they lift up and now you are fairly stable as well. If you do need, you can change, like I said, the front hitch on this as well. So there's an option here to change that hitch angle depending on what you have it connected to. Obviously, we're not connected to anything else right now, so it doesn't matter. Now, to power another device, you need to, to actually physically connect to that device with this first. Uh, right now, since we connected to it with the truck, will it work? I don't... Eh, maybe it will. It looks like the PTO is turning. You can see the PTO turning in there. So we're going to jump on up. I'm going to start lowering some devices down here. There we go. Got the ramp to finally lower on out into place. And now this device should be good to go. Now... It says it, you need to connect with the device to the apparatus you want to power. It worked fine when I had the truck hooked up to it. Um, it seems like it's powering just fine. We're going to fire this up right now. Yeah, everything is working absolutely as you would expect, guys. I was worried that it wouldn't do that, but I guess you can't take the trailer and connect it to this one. If that makes sense. The pellet maker to the trailer. You've got to do the trailer to the pellet maker. Something along those lines is what I understand. I'm not sure if there's anything I can think of that would connect the other way around. But anyways, let's go test this out. Got myself a couple of hay bales here. Let's toss these up onto our onto our conveyor belt. Get it nice and close. 
And look at that. Sales are going in, not a problem. Um, very cool little device. Like I said, just gonna save you the, the work of one of your tractors potentially. Oh, get in there. Get, 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 get. Drop that right there. It's gonna save you a work of any of your tractors that you may have spent a lot more money on. And everything works just as you would expect it. Pellets going in. So a couple different pieces of equipment here I thought we could use it with both the, uh, the, the mixing machine as well as our pellet maker. There's several others out there that you can probably think of to use it with. Just be aware, there are lots of options out there, folks. I think it's pretty cool. Anyways, that's it for the mods. But yeah, that's going to do it for all the new mods. That's the mods I wanted to check out today. Hope you guys enjoyed this kind of a different episode of the Farm Sim Show. We'll try and maybe do these more on the weekend. We'll see. But if you guys are interested, we do have the Farm Sim Show that goes most weekdays uh, when the new mods drop in the Mod Hub. So we take a look at all those brand new mods, same way we just did here. And also look at mods and testing what's currently going to be coming out for Farm Sim in the next little bit. So make sure you guys check those videos out later on in the week as well. Other than that, folks, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Great weekend. Stay safe out there and we will talk with you eh, probably in the next couple days. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time.